The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there. Welcome to the show. Brought to you in association with... Levi Solicitors. It's, yep. it's been a while, isn't it? Because yeah. of international breaks and everything. I've had a few days off. Feel, I'm feeling refreshed. Ready? Feeling, feeling recharged and ready to give my all for Bill's probate and conveyancing once more. Uh, I had an amazing moment during the break. I've been listening to Bob Mortimer's autobiography, um, comedian Bob Mortimer. And uh, Bob Mortimer used to be a solicitor before he became a comedian with Vic Reeves. Was sat there listening to me, me audio book and then this happened. Law school is a hothouse of lectures and learning. There are seven exams at the end of an intensive one-year course covering all the essential areas of law and legal procedure, conveyancing, wills, probate, criminal law, court procedure, family law, commercial law and accounts. Not my words, the words of Bob Mortimer. The big three, not in the right order, but... Oh, it's Bob Mortimer, maybe he's right. Yeah. Did have a shout-out, actually, from someone saying the, um, the lasting powers of attorney is where... where Private client solicitors make their money, so big shout out to the, the, you, private client solicitors. I know if anyone needs help in this world, it's lawyers. Yeah, I know they're struggling a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. These ones are good though. Levi Solicitors. Give them ten percent less, I say. Yeah, and um, well, that's how good they are with the discount code. Yeah, Levi Solicitors. uk forward slash the square ball to take advantage of the the ten percent discount on your legal fees. Will's probate conveyance and loads of other stuff. Litigation. If oh yeah. If you need to litigate something. Which you should, mm-hmm. if you need to. Yeah, don't do it. Um, frivolously. Don't be frivolously. No, no, no. no. Um, right then, into the weekly roundup. Uh, it's been the international break. Did you see Liam Cooper owning Kylian Mbappe up to a point? I have just seen a tweet saying from a Scotland fan saying we were competitive with Liam Cooper on the pitch and they were celebrating. And then you told me the score. It, it didn't sound too competitive. He did it right up to a point. There were some nice tweets about him um, defending well against Mbappe, and Scotland were in front for a bit. I didn't watch it with the, uh, with the... When you say a bit, how how a little of a bit? Just pull up the score for you. <laughs> I believe it was 1-0 at one point and it finished. It, it was 4-1 it finished, didn't it? I did see Scotland's goal. That was quite funny because the France defender just passed it to Billy Gilmore in front of the goal and he was a bit like, oh, OK, I'll, Wait, I'll score then. They did nearly beat Spain the other week as well, did Scotland. Do you know what? International football was so <laughs> passed me by in the I, last I few months. I'm sorry because it was a VAR thing. Mm. It was a Scott McTominay free kick and there was someone stood near the goalkeeper and he was offside and it wasn't it was given and it wasn't was, it given that for a foul it was, it was a foul I think wasn't it it was boring because it was VAR I was too busy watching the other side watching um, Calvin Phillips trundling round against Italy you didn't see this Rob did you but um, I watched it last night did you watch it no no he was he just looked he looked every bit of player who's played like 300 minutes of football in his Man City career just behind the game a bit out of shape not quite match sharp could have been sent off once or twice yeah he must, he must be at the point of having played more games more minutes for England than Man City almost at the moment which yeah. is which is daft yeah. well, he, was, he was subbed off at about 60 65 something like that to protect him from himself <laughs> <laughs> uh, that Calvin yeah we, we saw that Calvin a few times didn't we where he's, he's going to yeah. get sent off if you leave him strange career art like I said my prediction is he'll end up back here next year if we go up on loan because we can't afford his full monstrous wages <laughs> I think he might have already left City by then yeah. I've just seen some quotes there saying like, yeah, I realise I really need to play football now. And you imagine in January, that will sort itself out, I think. Um, Calvin Phillips looking a bit out of shape too. Did you see the photo of Weston McKenney? Mm. And far be it from me to fat shame anybody, but um, Weston McKenney for a, what is he, mid-twenties athlete? Not looking great in that photo against um, Germany, is he? There's a couple of tyres there. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a disgrace, isn't he? Really? <laughs> I know it's not the done thing to yeah have a go at the way people look and stuff but come on mate yeah. Yeah, come on there was an absolute gushing article about him in the Guardian the other day did you see that I think no. uh, I think they'd interviewed his dad oh, so right. it was a real oh, uh, okay. yeah it was a real we hard up, we piece. caught up with one of Weston McKenney's biggest fans and I think uh, yeah, the other line on Leeds was just that oh, he went on loan and they got relegated and it wasn't his fault so I mean, what, to, what can he do to be fair to young Weston um, he did concede that he'd not been in the best condition didn't he at Leeds and said he like, wasn't up to it which is uh, fair enough. You admitted it. Well, I think we could see it. Does he think he's still at Leeds? Mm. Is that why he's still in that shape? I don't know. But people, people in the states that I speak to about him says he's just he just kind of likes the lifestyle a bit too much. Like he's all the trappings of the money, you know, and maybe utilizing apps like Just Eat mm. and things like that. Deliveroo. I, I mean, to be fair to him, if I had that much money, I would be doing the same. 
but I'm not a professional athlete. I suppose that's the thing. Their ranch sauce. Yeah. Mm, indeed. Although he's, he's playing like wing back for Juventus, isn't he? Mm. Or he started the season there anyway. But then I was reading a few things about... Getting up and down that line. That's what he's great at, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I was reading a few things. I think he played midfield for the USA the other night and everyone was saying, God, we miss Tyler Adams. So. Mm-hmm. Do the running. Yeah, I did... Um, I did because I follow the dads sometimes on Twitter as well as the mums. Yeah. So I do still follow <laughs> branching out John McKenney, his yeah. dad. And I remembered why we didn't maybe criticise him as much when thank he was you at for Leeds. Your, thank you for your service, sir. Well, it's, he just put a picture on, on Twitter that was, um, it said, after some adjustments, and you know the, the sort of target of a man where you can see the, the head and the, the heart on it. It was just that blasted to bits. He's obviously wow. been, at, been at a gun range just yeah. pretending to shoot some humans. Is, so. he, uh, is he still accidentally quote tweeting Harambe? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe that was it's some sort of justice for Harambe that he <laughs> shot this paper man to bits. Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, little Scum Bastard has been chalking up the assists as well for Wales. Um, Ampadu did very, very well as well in midfield. Rodon played as well as they beat Croatia. I think um, Ampadu pocketed what's his mosh um, for Croatia? Modric. That's the one. It's quite good, isn't he? I like our little uh, Welsh connection in the in the team right now. Dan James has been really good this international break. He uh, played really well against Gibraltar, and you sort of think, well, Gibraltar. And then, have you ever been to Gibraltar, by the way? No, is it nice? It's confusing. Yeah, I went when I was a kid. It's really confusing. I enjoyed the feeding M and M's to the apes, the Barbary apes. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it's weird. Were you meant to be feeding M&M's to the apes? The taxi driver said you could do it. Okay. He was like, he he even advised, he said, I'll get the peanut M&M's, they really like them. (coughs) But yeah, you just drive up a hill. Up a hill, you mean the Rock of Gibraltar? Yeah. (laughs) That's the one. The thing that dominates the entire... Well, it's a hill, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's weird, it's like... They've got Spanish pavements and drive on the the right side, but then British traffic lights, it's all... all British British phone boxes, I remember that as well. Just confused me a great deal when I was there. Uh, especially when you come over from La Linea on the other side. And when you come in across, even on foot, you go across the airport runway. Yeah, like, yeah there's a, pedest- <laughs> a pedestrian crossing, you know, like a pelican crossing where you press the button and it goes beep, 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 beep. Airport or runway. Wow, wow. I thought you were going to say it was a zebra crossing and you have to stop for you as you're walking past. Uh, past. <laughs> yeah, they just <laughs> hold the flight, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's enough about Gibraltar. Sorry, you were saying about... Um, I can't even remember now. Oh, he was good against Croatia, basically. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Good. Got an assist. Good cross. Um, and of course, Uruguay 2, Brazil nil. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa rewriting record books again didn't your heart flutter when you woke up this morning and saw that he did although I was looking at the stats of it and it looks like a really tedious game Uruguay had five shots two on target Brazil two shots none on target right Neymar off in tears oh no one likes to see that no, I'm sure his sister will be around to comfort him indeed but uh, yeah there's some um, kind of parallels with Bielsa at Chile Can where... I just, what was he crying about sorry just he losing. got injured All right. got stretched off uh, was in tears, but yeah, I won't be able to grow the game in Saudi Arabia anymore. <laughs> I'd completely forgot he'd gone there. Um, but yeah, Bielsa, when he was in charge of Chile, he led them to their first competitive win ever against Argentina. Um, and I did a story on the blog uh, a while back now about Bielsa at Chile, and I was chatting to a Chile fan, and he was saying how the big kind of cultural change there was that their players suddenly started believing they could actually go and beat these teams. Uh, and they would talk in press conferences about beating Brazil and Argentina. And I don't think Uruguay is quite the underdog story as Chile uh, was, but it seems that he's having that impact. And I'm really intrigued as well by one of their goal scorers last night, Nicolas De La Cruz. Uh, a few years ago, I saw him play for River Plate, and he was genuinely one of the worst footballers I've ever seen. And a few days later, they were on telly again, and we watched him again, and he was equally rubbish and He's in the Uruguay time, uh, team in the middle of midfield and he's just scoring loads of goals and he's really good because that's what Marcelo Bielsa does. I was going to say he's, um, Darwin Nunez has been mm. turning to him for advice. Now, he's, you know, he, obviously he's only going to go so far at Liverpool. Now he can speak to a real coach <laughs> and um, and get some tips about how to be a, a better striker. God, I miss him. The more I think about it, I really do genuinely miss him. And I, I made the mistake of watching just the last half hour or thereabouts of the documentary season two, part two, just laid in bed the other night and I found myself just tearing up again. <laughs> you know, the, the the Take Us Home, the gentle song and the Bielsa speech in the background. Still not watched the final episode. All right, you've not, you've not. I've still not watched any of it. I've watched the first one, that's it. All right, well, you won't know what I'm talking about then. But yeah, it's, it's the moment at which we clinch promotion and uh, yeah, it's the, Char- like the Charlton game and the Barnsley. I watched it from like the Barnsley game onwards and I think actually I jumped backwards and watched the Swansea goal, Pablo, a number of times because it's, Pablo's goal at Swansea and then it cuts to a bit of a domestic scene with him and Mar Garcia at, at home or whatever. Skip past that. Leave them to their private life. No need, no need for me to intrude but then just watch the 
watch the climax of the season. And uh, yeah, it was weird, wasn't it? Like we we missed out on so much, and I only really realise it now. I think that's now the, the, now the world's got back to normal. I've not watched it because I'm just not emotionally ready to watch it. I don't think, but I do think uh, Bielsa at Uruguay is sort of the best we could have had it. Like to watch him, to see him managing a different club would have been awful. But to see him just having fun in South America, well, he doesn't look like he's having fun, given the way he's swearing. But um, <laughs> yeah, just to see him coaching a South American team is fun. The country of your mother. Indeed. Yes. Um, it's funny seeing the the alternate universe that has unfolded, though, which is that, you know, Anthony Iraola was potentially his natural heir and Leeds went after him and he's ended up at Bournemouth and they've taken loads of our players. And they're awful. So he could have gone to Bournemouth, could be Elsa, because they were sniffing around him. Mm. And he didn't go to Bournemouth. And this is what happened instead. And this is funnier. And this is nice. This is, yes, like I say, you can, I know Uruguay have been sort of traditional bastards of World Cups and stuff. But Suarez has gone now, hasn't he? He, he was always yeah. the worst of them. Mm -hmm. So you can now just, just go, oh, go on, go, go and do well. Yeah, it's more of an abstract thing in South America now, isn't it, than a eminently hateable. I mean, they are a set of bastards, aren't they? But, but they're, uh, there's something you can watch now, like fondly, I think, because Bielsa's yeah. there. The second in the qualifying group now. Good. Is, is it the top four or five that get there, isn't I it? I think it's five, like loads, isn't it? Yeah, I think maybe even more than that. Are you ready to love again? That's the question. Uh, <laughs> I think we do. We've got far, haven't we? Yeah. It feels it feels nice. Yeah. We're just in the early stages of the relationship. Yeah, we're, we're taking it. We're taking it slow. It's promising. Yeah. I've had a tattoo done. <laughs> 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 Life-size head on your back. Neymar, by the way, just looked up, gets paid over £350,000 a day. A day? In Saudi wow. Arabia. I thought you were going to say a week, though. Nope, that's a day. Yeah, that'd be silly, wouldn't it? If it was just a week. Loads more than that. Rubbish, yeah. Three, imagine being, only being offered 350 grand a week. <laughs> Wouldn't get out of bed for that, would you? <laughs> Pathetic. Um, back back to domestic matters, and we've uh, we've had Legion United's birthday. We've had clarity on the ownership now at uh, Company's House. And uh, an American man who owns Huddersfield... Got a little bit shitty and upset on uh, on Twitter, didn't he? Where should we start? Happy 104th birthday to Leeds. It's not a big one, is it? What, your 104th? No. no. He's, he's still getting a card from whichever royal is in charge by that point. <laughs> from the oh, Queen. No. You nearly said the Queen, I didn't, didn't you? Didn't you the like, Queen, yeah. One of the, lizard, the... One of the lizards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you think she's dead, do you? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just retreated <laughs> underground. Just what the MSM wanted you to leave, <laughs> is it? Oh, dear. But yeah, well done, Leeds. 104 mainly miserable years. <laughs> There's too many more. Yeah, it was interesting getting tweets, because I tweet some out to the effect of, you know, you feel like you've watched 104 years of it sometimes, don't you? And pe some people saying, like, I've genuinely watched over half of Leeds mm. United's entire existence. That's a frightening thought, isn't it? Jeez. Imagine being subjected to that. I mean, I say that, I've probably done 40-odd percent of it now. Mm. It's a good effort. It's been hard going at some points. You can have some time off soon. Yeah. Um, ownership. Yeah, so we are now officially owned by 49ers Enterprises and their friends. Um, the information has been updated at Companies House, which is the UK government business registry website. Um, the final formalities of that takeover taking place around the, the Watford game. So it all sort of started in, was it June or July, whenever the, the announcement went up on the website. But they actually only just got it all over the line around the Watford game. Um, as you can see by the documents that are being lodged there. All the changes happen on the 25th of September, which is the Monday after the Watford game. Um, so the potted version is outgoing directors are Radrazzani, Massimo, Marinelli and Sandro Mancucci. Um, new director is Rudy Klein-Thomas, which means that he joins Kinnear, Marate and Lowy on the board. Lowy, Lowy. Um, Radrazzani is no longer a person with significant control, I think because they've got to be listed as well. He's still a person house. with significant beef though, isn't he? Very much so. Uh, but new people with uh, significant control is Prag Marate and Jed York has been added to the list there. Um, the situation around like Ellen Road Limited, which is the separate company that's on there that, uh, that owns the ground, it's not quite as clear. But according to the latest supporters advisory board minutes, um, Kinnear said like the negotiations for the ground are underway and will follow in due course. So, uh, so that's that. Good. Get it all. Get the paperwork in. That's, uh, I mean, we knew this was happening, didn't we, essentially? But um, it's good to see, I guess, Radrizani's name taken off stuff at last because he's, he's there here, isn't he, commenting about Kinnear's interview and just hanging around a little bit more than he maybe should, whereas this is like this is like the final, no, you are wearing your key. Th we have changed the locks. I think he might be taking his name off stuff at Sampdoria soon, the way mm. things are going there. There's, there was reports in Italy, I think, yesterday that he's basically already taken a backward step from running that club 
and just left it to his mate. And he's still sort of pretending that he's got mates at QSI who are going to take over. <laughs> I know he's got a very, very short attention span, or you know, it seems that way anyway, just from sort of observing his, his general conduct. But has he run out of uh, steam there already? He's, um, I mean, you got to this point with Chilino, I guess, where you're like, why do you bother with this? Mm. You don't seem to be enjoying it at all. So what's the point? I mean, at least Chilino gets involved, like picking the team and sitting on the bench and stuff. <laughs> Whereas Radrizani takes over a club and then within two months, he's like, oh, do I have to like... No one seems to be appreciating me here. Yeah. I want to do something where people just thank me on a daily basis. Maybe he's going to get Kinnear back to run it. I mean, uh, in Phil Hay's story on all the company's house stuff and the new kind of ownership, he has written that Leeds going to um, appoint a chief operating officer mm. to yeah. work alongside Kinnear because Kinnear is currently the only... Uh, executive sort of based in England, I guess. Um, so it is good as well to see the club actually just employing some people to do some work, mm. which I think has been lacking badly over the last few years. Or spreading the workload anyway. Yeah. Like somebody to pick up the reins on the operating side, which is obviously you, you, you know um, about that. What's involved in the operating side? Correct, yep. <laughs> What's involved in it? Not so I knew. <laughs> Come on. Oh, electricity bills. Yeah. Got to sort that out. Mm -hmm. uh, there are five or six lifts. Yep. Got to make sure they're maintained. Uh, turnstiles <laughs> need to operate. Yeah. And Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's about it. Can we just readdress that? And, you know, they're on about putting Wi-Fi in the ground. And they said, we don't because we don't want people sat there filming. As Moscow pointed out when we discussed it, you don't need to have Wi-Fi to no. film. No. They're not putting Wi-Fi in that ground because that ground is very old and fucked. Yeah. And they're going to probably knock a lot of it down soon. So yeah. they're probably thinking, well, we could. Bear in mind, they won't at the... We've had Kinnear speaking about the cost of doing the toilets and saying, ah, oh, there's no point, point. We're knocking it down soon. Just yeah. piss into a hole on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, they, I can't see them putting Wi-Fi in if they're not willing to put toilet seats And on. we've got our, our router there. It's on the table. Mm -hmm. Could lend them it if you want. Just put a, a, what, a dozen of them. That should be enough, shouldn't it? I think one on each stand is probably going to be fine. Yeah. It's got four aerials on it as that one. And it's then you can get like an extender as well, can't you? Yeah. So, yeah. Fine. so put them in the plugs around the yeah. around Dellum Road. Perfect. To uh... see your fans nicking them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fine, wouldn't it? Just to get Wi-Fi in for everybody. But put Wi-Fi in because it's just like, you know, like I mean, even from the purely cynical point of view that they've got gambling partners. I'm sure gambling partners would like it if uh, they're, you know, uh, captive audience that's in there were able to actually use the, the apps mm. that sometimes part. when we've taken the lead and I'm, <laughs> trying, to, and I'm trying to put a fiver on the opposition to win <laughs> can't even get the page to load absolute yeah. nightmare and then they equalise anyway and you're like oh, fuck and daft stuff like checking other scores is nigh on impossible at certain times isn't it like at half time everybody naturally goes for the phones I bring a transistor radio in is that, that right? hold to my ear yeah. with the aerial up good lad in an old fashioned way um, what else were we going about that was it ownership yeah um they don't, probably don't need that route, so they'll they'll buy some of their own. But um, yeah, there's one thing I did notice. Like according to the, and I don't tell anybody this, by the way, but according to the EFL regulations, Regulation One One Four, I was sad enough to look this up yesterday. Um, each club shall publish the identities of the ultimate owner, that's person, not entity, of each significant interest in the club. That information shall, as minimum, be published on the club's official website on a page accessible directly from the homepage of that official club website. Couldn't find one. You little grass. Do you know what we need for that? A chief operating officer. <laughs> need to go outside. Duties, website. It's yeah. not my department, the website. <laughs> yeah. On the people of significant control, it's turned out that Tom Brady doesn't have any significant control at Birmingham, hasn't it? Yeah. After all that fanfare. Because they've put all the documents in at last and he's just like owns a tiny bit. Similar, like, we, you know, we've got the, the sports people in the background who are mm. also kind of hovering around as the, what, what, are the, what is it that Phil describes them as? Added value. Mm. That's it, yeah. People with profile. And that's what the big, grinning off did didn't it came on camera and grinned on telly against us <laughs> with his non-moving face <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah he's got he doesn't have a big enough shareholding does he to be listed it's 10 percent, i believe you've got to be listed as significant control so 10 mm. percent awesome white jeans mm. that's what it, that's what counts speaking of americans huddersfield's owner as we mentioned before got shitty about leeds ticket prices which are outrageous we should say by the way in no way i think should would anybody be defending 47 pound tickets it's pathetic mm. um but Basically, the story, if you missed it, was tweeted out complaining that we refused to lower our ticket prices. Then everybody pointed out that we'd offered a reciprocal deal to all clubs. People assumed that that was the case with Huddersfield. The Supporters Trust then confirmed with the club that Huddersfield had turned down the club's offer. They had been um, offered it. And 
it turns out that Huddersfield had asked Leeds to reduce their prices, but had not offered a deal in return, which you can understand why Leeds would have turned that down then, wouldn't you? So like, is, there, is there one opportunity to sell out though, isn't it? Leeds at home. So I, I think we should have, we should pay more to go to Huddersfield as an act of charity. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, a deal was then subsequently agreed, the reciprocal deal, and everyone went home pleased. Uh, football's full of bullshitters, isn't it? I did enjoy the uh, the article on our, our website and the tweets as well, sort of saying um, Huddersfield are the latest club to agree to our reciprocal deal uh, offer, which I think tells you, tells you the full story, really, doesn't it? Those big crybabies. Yeah, I must admit, catching up on all this, I was just like, what a waste of everyone's energy and time, to be honest. And it, and it sort of reinforces that football club owners on Twitter is usually a mm. shit idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, part, to be fair, like part of the problem does stem from the fact that Leeds charge £47 pounds and the West End is one of the most expensive parts of the ground and uh, we're not allowed to kind of lower that price for away fans if they're in the same part of the ground. But again, Phil's written about it on the Athletic website and um, he was saying Huddersfield had offered to charge 25 quid and then 25 quid in the Leeds away end, but then because Huddersfield charged 25 quid anyway, Leeds were like, well, that's not a reduction on, you're not losing out anything there. It's all just a bit of a mess that kind of stems from us charging far too much for home fans, I think. <laughs> this morning, Rob came in with his very nice peacock print coffee mm -hmm. mug and I was like, oh, that's nice, that. It's part of the membership pack. He was like, yep, yeah, 75 quid for yeah. that. Like, yeah. That's be bloody nice. 75 quid you get um, a cup and the right to purchase a ticket for 40-odd 40, for 40 quid. It's like, yeah. It's, it's a scam, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's an absolute rip-off. It ain't great. It ain't no. great. Um, on to the women and uh, the most notable aspect of beating FC United and Manchester which isn't even a real club was that um, the person we sponsor the player we sponsor Live Smart uh, got someone sent off which is great she did she had they, a, they got themselves sent off right? they did actually yeah but uh, she had a great game she's got a great opener I think she set up another goal um, you should read Flora's blog about this because it's all very good and then late on with the game at 3-1 um one of the scum or FC of scum, whatever they're called, uh, one of their defenders really went through Olivia Smart two-footed. It was a terrible, terrible tackle. Um, she only got booked. Liv Smart didn't really make any fuss of it, but it was a shocking challenge. But then um, the ball quickly went out for a throw-in and she just gave a gentle nudge on the back of uh, the defender who tackled her and quickly took the throw-in. And the defender who tackled her basically chased her into the penalty area even though Liv Smart didn't even have the ball and just kicked her in the back of the legs and gave oh, away a penalty. Like a good, a good old-fashioned like chasing. It, it was class, yeah. yeah. Uh, just booted her in the back of the legs. Would it have benefited from the Benny Hill music? It does have that vibe. And then you, it could have carried on as she was just shown a red card and the ref gave the penalty <laughs> as Leeds scored a fourth. It was a beautiful, like, proper heads lost moment. Good stuff. And 4-1 the final result there, if, um, if we didn't mention it before, which is nice. The Square Ball Podcast.